What is the most important thing to you when you play a TTRPG? What about when you're game mastering? Are your answers for those two questions the same or different? If you're like a lot of folks on the old interwebs, your answer might be fun. As long as the game is fun, you're good. But one player's definition of fun can be wildly different from another's. And without a candid conversation about everyone's expectations of a game, things can get tense, which in my experience isn't a lot of fun. Sometimes something that sounds like a lot of fun can be disappointing. And something that sounds ridiculous or outlandish turns out to be really enjoyable. Recently, I've gotten a few comments and private messages that have asked me to create a video that breaks down my preferred playstyle, as well as an example or two of how I run my games. After all, it'd be awfully hypocritical of me if I were to be giving advice on a channel like this and not have any evidence to back it up, right? So today, I'm going to candidly break down my preferred style of running TTRPGs, like D&D 5e, our unusual mode of play, and the surprising results that have occurred because of it. Hi, I'm John, this is Dragon Mind, where we discover our best selves through gaming, and today we're breaking down the benefits and drawbacks of running a live play-by-post TTRPG. Let's get into it. All right, first things first. This is me acknowledging that my opinions in this video are incredibly biased. These are things that I've discovered have worked well with my particular players. I am by no means saying you should do things like me and your game will be 100% better. Because this is a TTRPG advice channel, one thing that I've been asked for is to provide an example of how I run my games through some kind of live play, whether that be a podcast or video stream or something like that. And the logic is sound. If you're gonna be giving advice, how do we know that you're a game master worth listening to if we don't see you game master? So let me just respond to that point by pointing to my back catalog. For the most part, I don't think I've ever claimed to have plug and play content that's just guaranteed to make your games better. Usually the types of videos I create have diagnostic questions and through the process of answering those, you discover what game is gonna best work for you. Things like what is the scheduling reality of my players and have they proven that they can stick to it? Would it be appropriate for me to run my game using homebrew or would that overwhelm some newer players? What are the agreements and expectations of this game going in and have I clearly established those up front? Because TTRPGs are so varied and their gameplay is so intrinsically tied to the real world human connection that you have with your players, I don't think that plug and play content a lot of times ends up being appropriate. So if you don't find one of these diagnostic questions helpful, please let me know, maybe I can help you clarify, or maybe you just don't find me helpful at all. That's cool too. But if you're looking for a Dragon Mind live play as an example of how I GM my games, let me be upfront, it's probably not gonna happen. And here are three reasons why. Reason number one, I feel that most live plays aren't representative of how TTRPGs are actually played at a table. Shows like Critical Role and Dimension 20 are highly produced. They're played by actors with professional training, on professional sound stages with professional equipment, and a gross majority of people who play TTRPGs aren't going to have those things. Yes, the die rolls and their results and how they're interpreted are spontaneous. Yes, a lot of times the actors make goofy decisions, but they're still professionals and their purpose is to put on an entertaining show first. And a lot of their priorities are just different than you and your friends who might just be casually sitting around a dining room table rolling some math rocks. Reason number two, even if I wanted to do a live play, which I don't, there are a lot of logistical obstacles. First, you need a cast that's both willing and skilled to play a TTRPG in front of a camera. Second, I would need scheduling availability that matched their scheduling availability. 
and that thin sliver of the Venn diagram would be where the actual recording happens. I was actually part of a live play over on Rel's channel as part of a demonstration of his new system, Distal. That was a small three session commitment, and even then I was barely able to make it work. And then number three, in-person play at the table is something I just don't really enjoy anymore. My preferred method of play is actually online live play by post, which is something we started doing in 2020. And I've fallen so in love with playing my games like that, that I actually struggle to find the same enjoyment at the table anymore. I know it's a weird thing to say for someone who's running a TTRPG advice channel, but again, that's why I try to have my advice be so broad and applicable to many different kinds of modes because my preferred mode is fairly unusual. Now, if you haven't clicked off this video already, before I dive deeper into the history of why I run games like this, how exactly they work, and the benefits and drawbacks, I do want to say that I do have an example of what this kind of game looks like. Linked in the description below is a Google Doc of a short story that I was able to edit based on the chat logs of a real live play-by-post session that I ran. It's the best thing I can provide as a sample of how I run games. For some of you, checking that out first will give you better context to a lot of the things that I'm going to say for the rest of the video. Anyway, moving on. Live play-by-post. Back in 2020, when the Fire Nation attacked, my friends and I, like most tables, had to import our current games into an online format. Like a lot of tables, the way we played was through a virtual tabletop, Roll20, while we had a video call going on in Discord. Like a lot of tables I'd heard about, we had a two-window approach. We would have a video call going in Discord, at the same time a second window had a virtual tabletop, in our case Roll20, open at the same time. Also like most tables, Roll20 would display the battle map, character tokens, and NPC portraits. And we'd try to roleplay like we would at the table, by speaking in character and describing things verbally through Discord. Of course, a lot of problems started emerging. There were a lot of technical issues, like players having different devices, a lot of which were woefully outdated, and had trouble running the kind of software that was required for that kind of game. There were frequent internet outages and lag that would prevent players from hearing what the GM was saying. The same GM would have to repeat the same description over and over, sometimes for each individual player. And of course, etiquette concerns were only exacerbated. Whereas at the table, someone might cut in with a quick out of game joke and make everybody laugh. A lot of times what would happen is someone would say something, the rest of it, what'd you say? Can you repeat that? They'd repeat the same joke four times. And the same thing that was like a, a quick little cut became a major distraction in this format. That first week of quarantine trying to play online D&D, let's just say I do not remember that time fondly. As I was trying to figure out ways that we could solve some of these technical issues, one of my friends, Ian from Incendium RPGs, offered to run kind of a thrown together one shot based off of Death House from Curse of Strahd. When we all logged in and started the game, the very first thing he did was type out his description of the environment and then put it in Roll20's little chat log. And it felt like the clouds parted. Rather than rely on his verbal description, if he lagged out or something, I could just read what he wrote. I felt like I could roleplay truer to the environment he set up, because rather than misinterpreting or mishearing anything, we all had access to the same description. During that game, I decided to try something on my end. As a player, I started writing out all my characters' dialogue and their descriptions. Now, I have never really been a shy role player, but there have been times I've fumbled my words or had my out of game opinion mistaken for my character's opinion. But when I started writing it out, it started to hit the other players a little differently than when I would role play in person. It was easier to separate the character I was role playing from who I was as a person. 
When I was finally back in the GM's chair, I ran a session zero that laid out this experimental new format, live play-by-post. These were some of the agreements up front. First, our priorities for this game, given that it was quarantine and things were just different, was that first, we would engage in meaningful, immersive role-playing. Second, our fun would be more relaxed. It wouldn't be spontaneous and energetic. It would still be meaningful, but the pace of the game was slower and more thoughtful. And then of course, the last thing, I just wanted to make sure everything was fair. By relying on typing rather than verbal communication for the gameplay, it started to equalize everyone's equipment, because usually someone's device could at least run Roll20 and run the chat log. And if a player's internet went out, rather than missing something or forcing us to take a lot of steps back to repeat it, they could just catch up with what was documented. Which brought me to the agreements of how we would run this game. The first rule, if it doesn't get typed in the chat, didn't happen in the game. That way players wouldn't miss anything and they could scroll back and see what everyone said so that, that way they could respond appropriately. However, side chatter, jokes, questions about the game could still happen through our Discord video call. And a lot of times what would end up happening is I'd say something as an NPC, say something that would prompt some questions. Two players in character might respond at the same time by typing in their responses. And then what would happen is those two players would just decide, oh, your response was better written. Oh, you haven't spoken as much. I'm gonna let you ask this question. And everyone actually got to be a little more involved because of it. Now, the reason I call this live play-by-post is because usual play-by-post RPGs are hosted on some kind of forum or database. And a feature of that is a lot of the contributions are asynchronous, as in someone may say something about their character one day and a response doesn't come until the next day. This is a live play-by-post in that we're doing a play-by-post in Roll20, but we're all still logging into Discord at the same time and are playing in real time. It's just through a text-based format rather than spoken. Overall, what this format allows us to do is have two channels of communication. All the gameplay is happening in one place and all the side chatter is happening in another and you don't need real-time attention paid to what's happening in the post format in order to continue playing the game. And those two channels don't really conflict with each other in the same way that during a spoken game, side chatter may distract from some kind of interaction happening in real time with the GM. So again, here I would like to reiterate that at my particular table, playing with a live play-by-post format has yielded certain benefits. This doesn't mean that these benefits are likely to be experienced if you play with your table. And if you do end up trying it, I would be curious what your experience is in the comments down below. First things first, there is extreme clarity about what's happening in game and out of game. I've played in games where the DM, in bad faith, listens to something I say and then decides, oh, your character definitely said that, which led to a certain tension in the game that made it less fun. As I said, the Discord voice call side chatter can happen in parallel to the live play by post that's happening. Two players that are catching up about their kids or the latest football game have no interference with the story that's being told in text. As the GM, I never have to say, quiet down because this person is having a character moment. At the table, I can distinctly remember times where a player would have a little contribution to add. But because it was another character's moment, basically all eyes and attention were on them and no one else was allowed to participate, which makes sense if everybody's talking, no one's being heard. But in the text format, there are such little things that started coming out. For example, one player character is revealing their traumatic backstory or whatever, and the other players are able to asynchronously add their player characters' reactions to this with subtle nonverbal cues. You know, maybe a pinching of the eyebrows or tightening of the folded arms. Things that would normally be lost at an in-person spoken table format. Also, players can whisper to each other. 
send each other messages without sending cues that they're messaging other players. It allows for that whole secrets thing to be a lot more relevant and for the surprises to not get spoiled as easily. Ginny D, who is a very popular D&D YouTube content creator, recently released a video called The Struggles of Playing D&D with ADHD. She went into some very helpful tips about how to help players with ADHD or systems that ADHD players can use to better their enjoyment at the table. That being said, my table has its fair share of neurodivergence. And in that neurodivergence is also ADHD. A few of my ADHD players have mentioned that the benefit of our live play-by-post format is their ability to batch process. They don't have to struggle to pay attention to every little detail at all times, which is exhausting and not fun. Instead, they can read what's happening in chat and then as someone is typing, they can get up, do a load of dishes, switch some laundry over, stretch, check in with their kid, or just take a little mental break. And then when they come back, they can just catch up with everything that's been typed out so far. And if they missed a moment to chime in or ask a question, they can type it in. And as the GM, I'll just fit it where it matches in the timeline. Because everything is written out and very clearly documented, it makes what's happening in the game much clearer and less confusing. In fact, I've had one of my ADHD players say this format feels ADHD proofed. As in, they feel like their ADHD isn't preventing them from experiencing the most that the game has to offer. On this subject, I have played in my fair share of D&D environments that were just uncomfortable. As in physically uncomfortable. Like maybe I'm crammed on somebody's couch with a fold out card table in front of me. Or when I was playing at the educational center, we'd have these hard, uncomfortable folding chairs. And if you're sitting in them for six, eight, 12 hours at a time, man, does that kill your lower back. So by playing remotely in the comfort of our own homes, we have the freedom to design the space to being the most conducive to the kind of experience we want without worrying about interfering with anybody else's space. Oh, hey, you know how there are all these YouTube videos about how to take great notes in D&D? All the notes are there in front of you. You can just read them and re-reference them. And there are less breakdowns of communications or misinterpretations. Because if someone misinterprets something, it becomes really obvious and out of game through Discord, we can just say, hey, this is actually what I meant. Because of this, since we started playing live play by post, my players much more frequently remember the names of NPCs, important locations, and plot points. Sometimes better than I do. Which brings me to my ultimate point. In this format, my players just role play better. I have a lot of players that are just uncomfortable being performative at the table. Some of them don't like the feeling of embodying their character. Some of them feel defensive or anxious or for whatever reason just don't like the feeling. Whereas something about having that separation where they're writing for their character and having permission to take the time to thoughtfully craft what their descriptions and responses are, unlock a different kind of creativity. My players tend to enjoy being writers rather than actors. And I totally understand that this is not every table. One example that a fellow GM trying the live play by post format told me is he had one player that at the table was always really withdrawn, soft-spoken, didn't engage with the role playing the way he wanted. But as soon as they went into more of a typing format, this player suddenly became incredibly engaged, speaking in character, describing things very intricately. And then as soon as they went back to an in-person table, they withdrew and closed off again. Different players have different preferences and strengths in communication. And for players that prefer writing, like I do, we find this format more helpful than trying to organize the chaos of spoken chatter at the table. Now, as with any format, there are drawbacks to this. First and foremost, we greatly reduce technical issues at the table, and they still come up. Roll 20s, servers might go down, someone's internet connection gets laggy, or their device tends to have trouble on that day that we're playing. 
even assuming all those things work well. Roll20 updates, and some players aren't as quick to adapt to the new interface as others. Now, I've had some players try my games while I GM, and after giving it a try for a few sessions, they end up withdrawing. And the reason is because the biggest loss of this format is the physicality of the table. Like I said, my players don't really like embodying their characters. A lot of other players do. There are GMs I know that use physical props or tactile reminders, like handing out poker chips as a reminder for inspiration. You lose all those things if you're all remote in your own homes. There's also a certain energy at the table that a lot of GMs like to leverage off of. Again, you lose that in a digital environment. By the way, this isn't the first time I've broached this idea to the internet. I've released a TikTok on this and made a Reddit post at some point. And the response is usually something along the lines of, ah, oh, you lose the split second decision making and the emotional tension. To go back to it, one of the clearly laid agreements that my players and I made very early on is that this game would be relaxed fun. So. When you use words like split second decision making and tension, that's not what we find fun. To go back to my ADHD players for a second, they love being able to engage with the game and then go off and do something else. Other players hate how long this type of format takes. If one player is spending a long time carefully crafting their response, another player may just want the game to keep moving and moving and moving. So, whereas my players tend to be a little bit more patient and like to take time crafting their descriptions, other players find that boring or monotonous. And I did have a player mention that because it takes so long to type everything out, a lot of times they overthink their description, whereas when they're live at a table, they can just get into character and what they say just kind of flows out of them. In terms of drawbacks, a lot of these things are qualities that my players disliked about in-person play to begin with. So it wasn't that much of a loss to accept them for the benefits that we're getting through live play by post. However, if I was describing everything and you're sitting there cringing, not liking what I'm saying, if anything, this should just help you be clearer on things you love about your game. When I first started playing D&D back in 2016, the thought crossed my mind, rather than losing this awesome, profound moment we just had, what if this could be recorded, even as a book that I could read? How cool would that be? The ultimate byproduct of doing live play by post is that all the chat logs are recorded, and as the game master, I can go back, edit and revise and rearrange the chat log so that it reads like a short story. And my players really enjoy going back to even adventures that we had four years ago and connecting what was happening early in the campaign with what's happening now. By reliving the information and making it easier for them to relive it, they end up remembering major plot points and characters a lot better rather than if I was just speaking and expecting them to remember, notes or not. Like I said earlier, one of these short stories is available in the description for you to read at your own leisure. And I just want to know what you think about this format. Let me know in the comments down below, hit like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and remember, your story matters. Bye bye now!